So these days I try to work things out in my head, um, usually while I'm lying in bed, and I'm trying to reconcile contradictory ideas. And this, what follows is no, well, it's probably the major thing uh, at the moment. Uh, so I've been aware in recent weeks of talks about a, a climate lockdown, but have not looked further at this until I came across um, a quite a, an intelligent discussion. So first of all, uh, this is just a sp small excerpt from uh, Mr. Terry Wolfe's um, interview, uh, video which appeared on TikTok. Climate lockdowns? What, you think I'm making that up? Avoiding a climate lockdown by the WBCSD. That rolls off the tongue. That stands for the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. 3M, Apple, Bloomberg, BMW, Chevron, BP, Dow, DuPont, Google, IBM, Ikea, Kellogg's, Nestle, Procter & Gamble, it just keeps going. This was published way back in October 2020, so it's not even a new thing. They say, in the near future, the world may need to resort to lockdowns again, this time to tackle a climate emergency. Wait, how could the climate create an emergency that we need a lockdown to solve? Who cares? They say under a climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban the consumption of red meat, and impose extreme energy-saving measures. Fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. To avoid such a scenario, we have to overhaul economics and do capitalism differently. And this is uh, just an extract from his, uh, his interview uh, where he... Uh, describes it further. It says, like right here in the article, it says, under a climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, so you don't get to drive your own car, ban consumption of red meat, which surprises a lot of people, uh, impose extreme energy-saving measures, which could mean anything. It could mean just cutting your electricity entirely, and fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. That's how extreme they're talking about a climate lockdown. If that happens, you can expect to see those things. And that's why it went viral. That's why it's shocking a lot of people is the idea that we could go from the COVID lockdowns, which people already consider to be you know, world changing. We're going to remember this the rest of our lives. We lived through this terrible thing to not being able to eat red meat by government dictatorship. Like, not just health experts advise you to do so, it's going to be banned. P private vehicle use is going to be banned. Uh, fossil fuel companies, oil industry just drying up overnight, not being allowed to drill. It's such an insane proposition. And then the last part of this paragraph on this article says, to avoid such a scenario, we must overhaul our economic structures and do capitalism differently. And capitalism is underlined there to a uh, a hyperlink to a different article that this person wrote for the Guardian uh, saying that COVID-19 crisis is a chance to do capitalism differently. And the woman that wrote that is Mariana Mazzucato, uh, who, again, most people wouldn't have heard of, but she is the chair of the World Health Organization's Council on the Economics of Health for All. So that's a big mouthful, but she's the actual chair of a World Health Organization Council. So she's not just a random intellectual or academic. Uh, she's uh, the leader of several different things, different councils in Sweden, South Africa, Argentina, Norway. Uh, she's part of all these advisory councils. And so, yeah, she, she has a lot of weight, and that's why she's being hosted on this World Business Council of Sustainable Development. It was an interesting reflection that they use the term lockdown to describe a situation where they intend to take draconian measures to further curtail human rights in the name of a climate emergency. Uh, to quote, under a climate lockdown, in inverted commas, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat, and impose extreme energy saving measures, while the fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. Uh, so, uh, by definition, the term lockdown 
refers to the con confinement of prison prisoners to their cells. So let's just have a look at this little uh, segment. Is a term specifically meant only for prisoners in a prison. And so it seems our govern governments are openly flaunting in our faces that we have all effectively become their prisoners. And, you know, it's kind of like you've mentioned deplatforming. It seems deplatforming serves the function of sending a prisoner into solitary confinement. So, so a lot of the things that they propose in this article might have been measures that in the past I may well have embraced. For instance, I would be in favour of the provision of decent public transport, something that where I live has been allowed to seriously degrade right up to the ripping out of pre-existent electric lines for trolley buses only to be replaced by diesel vehicles, just uh, a matter of a couple of years ago. Or the abolition of corporate agriculture, most particularly of feedlots that have made their way to New Zealand from America. So all of this I would have been in favour of. If I was to think of a way to develop a sustainable way of feeding ourselves, it would be through permaculture. Unfortunately, we live in a very real climate crisis. I use the word predicament, uh, denoting something that does not have a solution. And permaculture, I'm afraid to say, is not going to save us. So uh, if you have a look at the sponsors of the organization that produced the article uh, referred to, you have the very definition of the wrong type of green. It is a list of all the main corporations that rule the world, including the very same oil companies that are most responsible for our situation. So let's just have a look at this segment. One of the things I pointed out was the membership of this council. It's called the World Business Council. It has pretty much every major corporation you can think of, 3M, uh, all the major, even though they're talking about how they would shut down the oil industry, uh, BP and all the major oil companies are part of this, DuPont, Dow. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what surprised me is that it seemed like this was an anti-oil company that wants to reinvent capitalism, but all of the biggest corporations are part of it and they endorse this view somehow. So uh, how do you wrap your head around that? Like what kind of what kind of collaboration or partnership could this possibly be where they themselves are saying we need to reinvent capitalism or else we're going to have these climate lockdowns, this dark ages, neo-feudalist nightmare. Uh, that to me was what sort of rang the bell and I said I had to try to tell people about this particular agenda because it seems to eclipse everything that's happening right now if it does come to pass or else we're going to have these climate lockdowns, this dark ages, neo-feudalist nightmare. Uh, that to me was what sort of rang the bell and I said I had to try to tell people about this particular agenda because it seems to eclipse everything that's happening right now if it does come to pass. So the very corporations who are largely responsible for the world burning now want us to tell the plebs how they should live their lives. No meat in the diet, no car except for those who can afford an electric car that has all the hydrocarbon elements as a gas guzzler, uh, such as 12 gallons of oil in every tyre, not to mention the huge carbon footprint of putting yet another vehicle onto ordinary congested uh, road. So as has been pointed out many times, the elite, the Bill Gateses of this world, will continue to eat meat and to fly around the world in their private jets. None of that is for them. None of this is for them. It is, in, it is indeed designed to produce a new form of feudalism. As I've pointed out many times, the corporate and globalist elite will often use inaccurate information, usually generalizations, when they want to manipulate people into accepting their self-serving agendas. But when it comes to specific observational information on just how quickly the ecosystem is collapsing in front of us, 
and would make their insane agendas moot, they are full of denial. So the one big problem for me is that just about all the critics of lockdowns and the Great Reset are complete climate change deniers because they see it not as a process of nature but as an invention of the corrupt people that run the world. Uh, so that's a very, very common theme amongst the critics. So these days I'm much more forgiving because they do reveal the nefarious agendas behind what we are seeing. They are usually genuinely decent, conservative folk, anti-war, anti-imperialist, anti-bankster, anti-corporate, and, and the list goes on. However, some of the denial goes to ridiculous lengths. So, for instance, the deniers will often point the finger at someone like Al Gore and point out that he claimed that the ice caps would be uh, would be gone uh, you know within a certain period of time and this hasn't happened. So if you point out with real evidence that this is happening in real time the response will come back as it did once oh it's summer what do you expect? And then we have someone like Doc Burkhart on True News saying there's no such thing as overpopulation. You could fit the whole of the world's population into Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> I don't see how anyone could possibly take that seriously, and yet so much of what they say about the affairs of the world is entirely rational and, and fact-based. Uh, there is a climate crisis, and there is population overshoot. However, on the other side of the ledger, we see an even greater degree of insanity. A lot of the people who talk about abrupt climate change are often not decent people. Some are positively satanic, in my view. When discussing anything relating to the world, they support the very people who are carrying out the genocide. They're pro-corporate. I mean, look how they embrace or are being embraced by all these uh, corporate criminals. They have no objection to any of the wars that are being uh, waged. And they never discuss the, um, the carbon footprint of waging war. For instance, I came across something from somebody who obviously has no objection to eugenics programs. At best, this is all ill thought out. Uh, at worst, it is, oh, I haven't got the word, immoral. Almost without exception, they support policies of locking down the population, injecting them with poison, and even with the narrative shifts, no doubt still support the contention that COVID-19 came from a meat market and from a pangolin or a bat, because that accords with their own uh, agenda, their own prejudices. So, for instance, I have a friend who is very ill, admittedly, who is so one-eyed about climate change that they gain a sense of security and safety from being under lockdown. Uh, my partner was told, don't come and visit, I'm locked down. Well, no one's locked down in Wellington. They now drive an electric car because that makes them feel good. And they ignore the fact that the car has a huge carbon footprint, has a battery made from lithium mined in Africa with child labour, and were electric cars to become the norm, coal would have to be burned to, to, to fuel them because of the very climate change they are so concerned about. Either, either that or the whole electricity grid would crash. Going back to the climate lockdown, we're being asked by the very corporations responsible for the whole thing to give up our meagre lifestyles while there is not even a suggestion that the main polluters stop polluting or that countries will give up their war machines that are one of the biggest sources of excess greenhouse gases. The whole thing is replete with hypocrisy 
and double standards. As Mr. Wolf says in the, uh, in the video uh, interview, we're seeing a cross-section of corporate capitalism, Marxism, and technocracy. So I really uh, recommend taking the time out to listen to what I thought was a very interesting and intelligent conversation, and I'll put the links in the description box uh, below. This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.